certain obstacles through work that just made it more clear that something needed to be dealt with. Um, and therapy wasn't quite working as well. I went about the business of determining what what I needed help with and, and found out that that was the case and just started on the journey. Um, and at the same time, I had just started hiking, mm -hmm. probably within months of those. Hey, welcome to Travel Tuesday Happy Hour, where we interview dope people doing dope things from around the world. Today, we have an amazing guest. My friend, tell us who you are and what do you do? What's up? What's up? Hey, Paige um, and everybody. I'm Ralph Lee. And what do I do? Um, that's a good question. I live life and I try to infuse passion into everything that I do. Um, and for work, um, I'm a director of inclusion at an advertising agency, Arts and Letters Creative Company here in Richmond, Virginia. Okay, okay. Now, I mean, not to state the obvious, but what is a director of inclusion, um, especially for our advertising agency? What does that look like? Um, well, I'm trying to define what that looks like for me. Um, okay. New role um, as of this year, but it's a shortened version of a director of diversity, equity, inclusion, and is focused on um, creating, creating space um, for people of color to make their way into the industry. Okay. Um, and it's much more than that. Mm -hmm. um, it's recruiting, it's, it's focused on how do we look in different places to find that untapped talent it's creating space for people of color within an agency that is more, way more times than not predominantly white. Um, it's shifting the culture in one kind of microcosm of the country um, that is a company, in this case, an advertising agency um, built on, on ideas and people's perception of you know, how they move around in the world and how they interact with products and services and things that they consume and how they can see themselves in it. Um, and just making making that more realistic to what we see in the world. Okay. So, shortened version. <laughs> Love the short version. Um, so I'm gonna ask another real question, right? Um, as you work in marketing, um, one of the biggest things is buzzwords, right? Um, we know with everything that's occurred within this last 400 years of African-American um, history, um, and then more recent, us having to kind of be forced to sit down and pay attention, unfortunately, close attention to what's been going on more recently. Do you feel as though that diversity inclusion um, is becoming more of a buzzword in across the industries? Um, regardless of, you know, uh, the demographics that they support um, so that organizations can seem more sensitive to what's going on? Or do you think that this is a genuine push towards um, real inclusion? It's been a buzzword for quite a while. Okay. Decades. Um, probably more so in the last decade than ones before it. So it's not anything new that it's buzzwords and the terms used to explain diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, there are also buzzwords there. So I would say that what's happened over, over this year, over the summer with George Floyd and the response and Breonna Taylor and so many others, it has awakened a sensitivity to agencies um, and it's hard to say if it is a authentic and real awakening mm -hmm. or if it's just something for the moment that will die down come 2021. And sorry, that was my dryer. <laughs> it's all good. It's um, but there's, there's a lot more 
scrutiny and eyeballs on what companies are saying they're going to do in the wake of in the wake of George Floyd and this huge wave of um, companies wanting to restructure and make changes that it's going to leave a lot of people open to vulnerability a lot of the companies open to vulnerability when you know their names are called and it's asked what have you done so I think it's an awakening and it will have reactions. It has had reactions across the board, some authentic, some not. We see it in advertising campaigns since the summer. Um, and you know, time will tell. So I hope that it's real. It feels real looking several months after the fact and just kind of tipping my head into what the industry is talking about and what people are doing. Um, but to be honest, I'm, I'm more focused on what I can do. My one person showing up at my company and in this world can do along with what we have about 150, um, employees at the agency and trying to just figure out what we can start to do and do more of it. Cause you know, it's not like there haven't, haven't, ha it's not like there hasn't been any efforts to, to make change and do the right thing. It's um, it's just that it's not, it's just typically not as um, long lasting and as impactful as as we'd all want it to be as people of color in, in the advertising industry. Okay, okay. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, you also mentioned earlier a liver of life and then marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. Um, from what I understand, you used to be a a, a model for outdoors, uh, company, right? Well, outdoors ish company. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so tell us about this and kind of like clear this up for me. So like, what exactly were you doing? And, and it was for REI, I believe. Yeah, it was for okay. REI. Yeah. Um, so let, let me just be clear first and foremost, <laughs> I wouldn't qualify myself as a model per se. <laughs> I just got lucky twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, look, you know, that's more than some of us got. So it's just kind of giving you your flowers while you got them. You know what that's I mean? Fair. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You need some more flowers in your background. You got a lot of foliage back there, but I don't hey, see. Hey, look, this is, you know, flowers. this is the falls up in Ghana. I just had to share some of my content. This time last year I was in Ghana. So, Ooh. you know, I just wanted to really kind of show some of the footage that I was able to capture, you yeah. know, enjoying the outdoors, just like you like hiking and all of this mm. stuff that led you on the cover of REI. So full, full circle, circle, baby, full circle. Anyway. <laughs> all, right. all right, I dig it. <laughs> and I appreciate it. And like, you know, just calling that out because a lot of times personally, one thing, one thing that I try to be aware of and acknowledge in myself is um giving myself props where possible because I'm I'm the last I'm the last one to do that for myself. So you and me both. You yeah. and me both. <laughs> um but to answer your question, um another long story made short is I really got in, I'm from New York, I'm from Queens, and um, I moved to LA uh, back in 2011 and had never hiked or camped in my life and discovered the outdoors and started hiking and eventually got into camping. And, and then eventually I got so excited about it that I, um, or fell in love with it really, just that that innate connection that you get when you touch nature and you're immersed in it. And I started a hiking group called Trailblazers and I would take people out every month to go on hikes and um, predominantly people of color and trying to expose more of us to the outdoors like I was. And um, I wanted to get better at it and just know what I was doing more. So I went and um, took a navigation training course through the Sierra Club and I met um, I met this young lady um, who's an outdoor journalist, and we became friends along with with a few others. But she was kind of my gateway into the REI world because she was already asked to do a campaign with them, and then she she needed to bring some friends, some friends that were diverse. And luckily, I was right there, and I got lucky. And she hit me up, and we did the did one campaign, and um, it was a print campaign for REI in 2016. And it was near Palm Springs, okay. um, Idlewild is, is, the, is the location, it's the mountain, the mountain town near Palm Springs. And then 
two years later in 2018, she hit me up again. We had talked in between then, but she hit me up after not talking for a while. And um, just was like, hey, Ariel wants to do it again. But this time hey. in Hawaii for like eight days. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> All expenses paid. I'm like, okay, I'm in. So I took off work. Um, luckily at my agency at the time, it was unlimited vacation. So I was able to take off for the whatever, eight, 10 days. And um, yeah, that was that was that. And had a great time. That's amazing. I mean, here's the thing about that is like, you know, um, you as a New Yorker, I mean, Queens, unless you're going up to the Catskills or the or to the mountains, you're really not gonna be able to be exposed to the things that you can't. Uh, ironically enough, everybody goes to California all of a sudden become outdoors people, right? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. just because depending on where you go. It, it leads into that because there's so much beautiful scenery that you're exposed to, except for the like, it, you know, which is completely opposite to the concrete jungle, right? But if you um, take, if you stop anywhere in Los Angeles and look around you, there are mountains. Like you're 20, 30 minutes from any, from, from a trail, exactly. you know? Exactly. Um, so yeah, you had, it, it, unless you just are adamantly against you know, the the uh, the hurdles of, of being in the outdoors so much that you don't expose yourself to it, you have no choice because somebody's going to invite you on a hike at some point. Exactly, exactly. And, and now that leads me to what was your first travel experience? Was it going to college and then leading you into flying to California? Or what was your first experience? I know for me, um, my first international experience was going to Haiti. But my first travel experience was maybe going to Lake George, um, mm. upstate New York. You know what I mean? So kind of like, because I, I think a lot of times people may not take the definition of travel as domestic as well. Mm. Um, for some of us, that's all we've been able to do. And mm. so for some of us, we're fortunate enough to be able to go further. So what was like the first travel experience that you could remember? Well, a couple of things real quick. One, um, there was a... Someone had mentioned this to me, or I might've read it somewhere, or, or I don't know, but when I was in LA, the thing that really sparked me to start the, the hiking group was um, someone that mentioned that a lot of people in LA that are like east of the 405, so like not necessarily close to the, to the ocean, um, especially when you, when you get in the hood, a lot of people haven't even, some people haven't even been to the beach. Like it's like, it's apparently like a real thing. And I'm like, I came all the way from the East coast. I mean, there's water there. Right. But like the Pacific ocean, like it's, it's right there. And you mean to tell me that there are kids that haven't, you know, been exposed to the ocean or, or, or to a hiking trail or, or, or what? So like, that was really my, 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 uh, my goal was to just break that as much as possible but anyway um it just that just kind of your question sparked that and also i wanted to ask you how did how did you delineate between your trip to haiti versus your your trip where, where was your other trip uh to lake george stuff lake like george that. so you said that you wouldn't consider the trip to haiti travel. oh no no i said i consider both of them travel so okay. First of all, I'm the interviewer. You can't be asking me questions. Nah, right, I'm just fair. joking. Right. I'm just joking. No, um, the, the, reason I, I, the reason I stated that was um, I think there's a lot of misconception with travel, how you conceptualize travel, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, one of my first few guests last season, um, you know, she expressed she, she was a mother of, you know, two young children. And being able to travel was, you know, creating an adventure for the kids getting in a car and driving somewhere and seeing somewhere different than Brooklyn or, you know, Miami or, or, you know, wherever. And so for me, those travels didn't necessarily stick out as much as going to Haiti. Cause it was like a different world, different language, different experience. Mm -hmm. But um, my fondest memories were, you know, going out to Lake George every summer with the family because it's what my mom can afford with mm -hmm. four children. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it wasn't till we got older or unfortunately certain like 
situations that happen in family. You'd have to go away for a funeral or something of that nature. Um, and that's why we were traveling um, a lot of the times. But like, no, I, I take both of them as travel experiences. It's just my most memorable first travel on a plane was to Haiti. But yeah, I remember all the little ones in between. Okay, got you. I was just curious. Um, all right, so let's see. My first time traveling, and you know, it's funny, like I would have answered this differently yesterday at this time than I am now because I'm, I'm in the process of moving apartments. Um, and I'm just going through a lot of stuff and purging. So I came across, um, I came across something that reminded me of just what I was doing in elementary school when I was growing up in Queens. And, and what I, what I um, remember most probably is my after school and summer camp time at the Police Athletic League and how that would expose me to different things, especially during summer camp. And probably my first time traveling would either be um, going to, where do we go? Um, yeah, I, I, man, ozone park to a pool or something, going somewhere um, outside of, outside of um, my neighborhood to, to go to, go to a park and you know, go to like a, um, a uh, amusement park or something. It was either that or going to South Carolina to visit family. Mm. So somewhere in between. That I, must have been that must have been interesting. It's completely different from Queens. I mean, you. I went from seeing lightning bugs that I could catch in a jar <laughs> to <laughs> dragonflies. <laughs> that big. Right, right. And I remember just being terrified by these dragonflies, even though I was told that they wouldn't bite. Still, mm -hmm. those are too big and they're moving too fast for me to be relaxed. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, so, ultra shock for sure. Okay, okay. And so from there, how did your spark for travel get ignited, really? Um, I, I mean, as a kid, the thing I enjoyed most about traveling is how refreshing it, it probably, and I'm sure it had to do with location and the fact that we were going to the South a lot in, in the summer, it'd be crazy hot. Mm -hmm. And I just remember how cold and refreshing the air conditioner would be in whatever hotel we'd stay in. <laughs> that was the thing that, that got me excited when I was a kid. And of course, because yeah, you can't you can't blaze the AC all day every day at the crib. You know, know. what I mean? Look, no. you ain't paying for the electric bill. Put that thing down. Exactly, exactly. And it was more fun in in New York to go open up a, a fire hydrant or go catch an open fire hydrant anyway. So um, I was outside more than anything. But that was that was probably what you know excited me when I was a kid to travel. But as I got older, um. I'm trying to think what would I what was my first like trip as an adult that really that really got me excited um man probably I mean that was that was a I moved to LA when I was you know like I said in 2011 when I was what 24 mm. Okay. and um that's that's prime time like you 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 the man out there you living man. you living nice it was it was it was it was, a, it was a great time to be alive you know um pre-covid days <laughs> in uh, a place that i had only visited once on an interview but had seen so much of in media and i just had to touch it and i luckily was able to get a job and relocate out there and it just like opened my whole world up i lived there for six years um so that was that was you know that was like my first real adventure you know just like getting out and and exploring the country without any parachute i just rolled okay. i mean i had a job but yeah. got gotcha. you so so you made it to la you discovered the outdoors what about the outdoors really draw you in um, other than its beauty, right? Um, or maybe its beauty is what draw you in. But what was it that 
led you from just, all right, let me go this hiking tour and just see what it's about to hosting your own hiking tours. And then, you know, being, being showcased on REI, like what were, what were the things about hiking in the outdoors that really like drew you in? It's a good question. Um, is what it did for me mentally and spiritually. Like I didn't, so in the day-to-day -day rat race of work and life, um, it has an impact on some people more than others. And for me, it's, you know, I have ADHD, which I didn't realize before I moved to LA and until I was hit with certain, um, certain obstacles through work that just made it more clear that something needed to be dealt with. Um, and therapy wasn't quite working as well. I went about the business of determining what, what I needed help with and, and found out that that was the case and just started on the journey. Um, and at the same time, I had just started hiking. Mm probably within months of those of, of, of the diagnosis. And I started to use the outdoors more intentionally. And it was a space to clear my mind. Um, so on a mental level, I needed I needed it. Really. Okay. Um, and then spiritually just being centered, right, kind of like where you are with your background of mm -hmm. water running naturally trees flowers animals birds all the things the earth because you're literally on a mountain you know what i mean like a, protru a protrusion of the earth like you're amongst the things that god or whomever you choose as your creator created and the stuff that we have not we've had no hand in and you just sit there and you're kind of a part of it you mm -hmm. know so it's a, it's a feeling that just connects back to like spirituality in like the 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 realest way so those are like the two two main reasons why i enjoy it and i just felt like after hiking 20 or 30 tra trails in la and didn't even realize how much like knowledge i had amassed of the areas around la I'm like more people need to experience this so you know and also the ability to connect with people because when i take someone on a hike i mean what how i don't know any circumstance that you get an opportunity to connect with someone more where you're in just like silence and nature sounds and it's just y'all two or y'all three or however many there are and you're just vibing and talking and or being quiet whatever the case may be um so yeah those are those are probably like the main reasons I would say that I, that I enjoyed and just kind of led me to to bring more people on. Nice, nice. So that covers hiking and the outdoors. So what drives you to like travel, right? Like what drives you to say, all right, I want to take this trip to wherever your next destination is. What is it also part of that peace of mind that getting out of the mundane day to day? Or is it just, once again, just maybe similar to, to your hiking in the outdoors is exploring new terrain, exploring new places to find your Zen. The adventure is, is, is the thing for me. So traveling either within the U S or, or abroad, it's the adventure. It's the unknown and being okay with what, what happens whenever I get there. Okay. Um, it's exploring cultures that, uh, that that I haven't and learning more about people because that's really the core of it is I, I I enjoy being around people and enjoy understanding people's stories and and connecting so um those two things for sure oh and food I, I don't love, blame you on that one <laughs> uh, I, I don't just, blame you on that one yeah that's a, that's an undying undying passion for sure too so you mentioned the um the fact that you know diversity inclusion is not a recent buzzword, but 
is a buzzword that's been uh, magnified as of recent because of George Floyd, because of Breonna Taylor and many others that we've kind of had to sit down and watch uh, be brutalized or be, um, be ha have their lives taken for um, you know unnecessary reasons. As a black man, as you travel, even during some of these hikes or as you travel abroad, do you find the same treatment or um, do you find it that you're, because of how black men are treated here, you're kind of treated different in other countries or in other places that you visit? Um, well, that, that's a loaded question. Yeah, <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> All right, so when I travel, and I'll just use like a very recent experience as, as one example. Like I've, I've been living in Richmond now for almost two years. And with the pandemic, I haven't been able to make good on, on my promise to myself to get outdoors and hike and do outdoor things as much as I've wanted to, but I have been able to dabble a little bit. So just before Christmas, I, I took a solo retreat to a cabin at a state park near Virginia Beach. And um, it, was, it was an exciting time for me to spend, um, to like regather myself and for all the reasons that I had mentioned, not having a lot of time. I have a five-year-old son. Um, I'm in a new, new, a, a, a new relationship, um, new job. There's a lot of things happening. I'm, I'm moving, a lot of transition. So I haven't been able to spend a whole lot of time alone so it was much needed but when I went out to to this trip I was very mindful of where I am as well and how you know everyone's views aren't aligned with my views especially the view of, of me and especially being you know in a place that's kind of secluded luckily it was close to civilization enough to where I didn't feel so secluded that I needed to take extreme measures, but I, I had to make sure that I was on a swivel. My head was on a swivel and I had protection and I made sure everything was, you know, made sure that I had a plan in case the worst case scenario. Right. Um, so, you know, I had a knife. I don't have a gun license yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. But, you know, I had a protection piece with me at all times just to make sure, just in case, because it's a real threat. And people will remind me, even when I was in LA or anywhere else, when I went camping, um, you know, of just of safety. And you know, I in LA, it's 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 you know, I I'm, I feel less threatened when I go camping because um, you know I, I have not run into many issues at all with people. Everyone's just so open and and um, and and kind in the outdoor scene in LA and same with, with, uh, with Oregon, but, um, that's where I lived before. Sorry to mix, mix things up, but, um, before Richmond, but in, in Virginia, it's a whole different ball game for me. I'm, I'm very much on alert. So that's top of mind. And, you know, it doesn't take up all of my mental energy when I, when I go out to camp, you know, to stay in a cabin for two nights, but it is something before I go to bed that I, that I think about, you know, and when I wake up, you know, is it, has anything happened? I go out and look at my car. Like so I, how is that, how is that differ from your international travel? So my international travel, um, I haven't, I haven't been to a ton of places. I've been to a few, um, I've been to, to London, to Paris, to Hong Kong, um, Bahamas and, um, probably when I'm traveling internationally, it is, I mean, I guess it's, it's very much the same, the same thought process is, but on a grand, a much grander scale, because not only is it, you know, the color of my skin that I have to think about people that might not, you know, um, respect that yet in, in the way that, you know, gives us, gives us all that equality that we need to move around the world comfortably, but also, what other perceptions of this American black man in particular would potentially fuel 
any type of conflict that that could um that could arise. So there's another level to it for me when I travel internationally, but definitely head on a swivel and even on top of that, just you know, other things that anyone would would have to worry about, pickpocketing and right. You know. Now, do you feel that as though that that's a conditioned behavior um, over time, seeing so much things happening here, that we automatically take that with us wherever we go? I mean, I'm not saying never have your head on the swivel, right? But I think, um, you know, we've been conditioned to like think, oh, we're possibly going to be treated the same way everywhere we go. We're possibly going to be judged everywhere we go. Um, I think now, um, oddly enough, um, there is more empathy for Black men and women um, internationally than there has probably ever, right? Um, you have countries that pretend they never had slavery, um, mm -hmm. but because they've abolished it so much sooner, um, they tend to turn their nose down to the United States and how they do things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, making them look a lot nicer in a sense <laughs> towards people of color um but you know do you feel as though that um the way you feel and move around internationally is kind of i don't want to use the word triggered but kind of something that's been conditioned to you that hey you know no matter where you go as a black man you need to look out for yourself not necessarily out for common safety reasons but because you are a black man mm, well I have not traveled internationally this year at all. So I can't speak to the current climate internationally for myself, but in terms of being conditioned to be on alert when traveling as a black man, I probably would have to give you a mixed response of 50% yes and 50% no, because have I been conditioned based on my experiences here and also just the general experiences Black people in America? Um, and has that been ingrained in me subconsciously? For sure. Okay. Um, so, you know, I just, I just chalk it up to, you know, being worried or, or being in slight fear of, of safety only makes you more prepared and I'm, and I'm, and I'm okay with that. Okay. But then on the other half of, um, the no half, I would say there's just a general level of, of safety that you have to just assume when you travel, no matter who you are. And, you know, it, it can vary and you just don't know what like just, just look at our country like anything could happen in any city for any reason you just read a headline and you're like whoa what like this guy just decided to shoot up a whole music festival in las vegas from a hotel window like why and you just don't realize that terrorism is everywhere right and it can go down at any moment so you know i'd say i'd say it's a, it's a mixed answer Okay. Okay. Um, so you mentioned not being able to really get out much lately because of COVID and everything like that. Um, where were you when things started to shut down? You know, how did that kind of impact life for you? Uh, I remember being at, at work. Um, and the day that I want to say it was March 13th that our company just, just announced that we would start working from home indefinitely. Mm. And prior to that, maybe like a day or two, I don't know if you got this message too, but <laughs> there was a message or like a, a recording of a black woman's voice saying that she knows someone or works for the Pentagon and that is, there's gonna be a national mandatory shutdown and you won't be able to go to grocery stores. Did you get that? Did you? No, I didn't that? get that. So yeah. several people in my circle had gotten it. And um, I was like, whether this is true or not, it's close enough for me. Right. So I went to the grocery store and probably spent about $200 
on canned goods and <laughs> Being, being an outdoorsman, you knew what you needed to get a hold of, yeah. but you ain't worrying about, you know, getting caught up like everybody else was during that time. Exactly. Self-sustaining. I had tea candles or just sources of light, all types of stuff that I just needed to just make sure I got. And I spread it the word just to make sure everyone else was, you know, aware. But yeah, that was, that okay. was, I was just holed up in, um, in my apartment, you know, until until more information came down but yeah that's where i was okay and so how are you adjusting to the new normal like because i know we know um you know uh we came down to visit and we experienced daddy daycare slash daddy uh homeschool and work at the same time <laughs> yeah. um that must have been a, a a very unique experience at least the first time right um because we came what second half or was it still the first half I think it was still the first first semester. So last last semester. Yeah. Um, how was that introducing a homeschool? Because I know you on and off weeks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how was that introducing homeschool work and then really like giving him the attention that he needs, um, you know, during a pandemic? Oh man, one of the most stressful times of my life hence the need to go to that cabin you know last week for a couple nights right. um, I feel like I was just kind of decompressing the entire year but man this summer was challenging because I mean first of all I just as I do with anything that I feel needs attention effort like I just mentally prepare myself for whatever and I put my head down and I go for it so the way that I would handle supporting him with virtual school when he's with me because like you said I have a, I had him one week every other week um and I would support him in virtual school I was managing a production for for Google ad campaign which a global campaign and it was it was probably one of the most involved um productions that i've that i've ever been a part of and um it was tough I almost had i had a couple of points where i where i had a i had to have a real talk with myself and i almost broke down and i wouldn't realize until a friday once the work is done and I put him to bed and I had some quiet time and it wouldn't happen every Friday, but it would happen probably, I think the first time it happened, I, I had probably been like a month straight. And I think there were times within that particular month that I had him for like two weeks instead because his mom had to travel for work. So I kept him longer. And um, it would just hit me like, wait, I just did all that. I'm tired. Like, <laughs> I. I'm tired and there's a lot of stuff undone and I, you know, I know why his, his name's Channing and, you know, for everyone who might hear this. Um, and I haven't given Channing enough time this week. Like I need to figure something out. So um, during the summer, luckily the YMCA here in Richmond had a, um, this was during the summer, so he wasn't virtual learning yet. Um, so it was just more, that was even worse because before virtual learning in the fall, um, the summertime was even more hectic because I had to create engaging educational plan for him and try to factor in some playtime and just like stimulate him like all day mm. and work. And it was just crazy so luckily I was able to a friend of mine had suggested the YMCA summer camp because their kids were in it and they had solid um social distancing COVID-19 protocols that I, that made me feel comfortable so I talked it over with his mom we put him in there and that helped because at least for a few hours out of the day I was able to focus on work um so there were there were ways to deal with it but man it was a stressful time and um, I know my work suffered a bit because, you know, I just wasn't at my best. But 
everyone was in the same place. So there was kind of a, a collective understanding that all right, we're all doing the best we can and we'll we'll work through it. So yeah, I mean that's that's amazing because I mean, you know, um I've I've talked to a couple guests who are parents and you know, there's a newfound respect for educators. You know what I mean? Um, I was just talking to a um, an educator on the more higher administrative level, and he was explaining to me how, you know, they have to look at each child on a holistic view from um, feeding them, because some kids don't get food um, at home in the mornings, in the afternoons, um, making sure their medication um, is available to them at home, uh, making sure that they're still co- getting the therapy that they would be getting in school. Like yeah. we forget that school is not just a place of education; it's a place of well-being while they're in their in their custody. So, um, you know, as parents, you guys are um, feeling some of the pain that multiple people have to deal with in in making sure your child is properly cared for and educated throughout the day. Yeah. So. Um, there definitely is a much found, uh, newfound respect for educators in the, in the school system. Um, so we're going to move forward with travel. What are Ralph's travel tips in, um, you know, getting, getting out there? Just, just not necessarily getting on a plane and traveling, but like really just getting out there and experiencing the world, whether it be domestically or internationally. Well, I'm keeping, I'm putting local travel higher on my list for sure. Um, it's just what I feel more comfortable doing during this time, um, getting further away from the crowds, but also immersing myself in something that is going to be rewarding and fulfilling. So, you know, hitting up more state parks and doing the cat thing we're in winter now so it, it feels seasonally appropriate to to just basically hit up as many um cabins and yurts and what have you that i can find in in virginia in the surrounding area so that's kind of like immediate travel goals okay and um but you asked for tips didn't you yep tap tips all right tips One big tip that I that I would say that I have is not choosing a destination, whether it be local or international, just based on the location. Okay. For me, I, I I like to like location can be a start, but mm-hmm. it's more about what am what am I looking to gain from the experience. Gotcha. Um, like I ha- I've had a trip to Ethiopia on hold. For two years um well i was supposed to go two years ago but work and then i actually booked travel uh right before the pandemic in the shutdown it's probably like in february and then i had to take a credit so that's still in waiting but like for example i know that i'm gonna get so much from that experience going to africa for the first time and then also having a friend there that is going to host and, and show show me as much as, as she can. And I'm gonna get a lot from that experience versus just going somewhere where I, I don't have any ties just cause I wanna see, you know, the landscape or, or just go vacation on the beach. Like all that is good, but I try to mix in, um, you know, levels to, to where I'm hitting, to where I'm traveling. Um, does that make sense? Yep, it does. It does. Um, so in other words, you know, um, try to match the experience with the locations. Because, for example, um, if you're going to the Maldives, don't expect a whole bunch of mountain hiking and, and stuff like that. Um, expect a couple of water sports and chilling at the beach all day long. But if you're talking about culture and tradition, you can do your Joburg, your, your, your Ghana, your... Nairobi's and stuff like that so that you can get a true cultural experience and then if you're looking for hiking you find your um you can go to Thailand you can go to um Europe and stuff like that so definitely understand what you're talking about yeah because I try to pack in I mean even 
when I'm local, like it, we can probably blame it on on the ADHD, but I like to pack <laughs> in as much as I can get out of whatever experience to make it more worthwhile. Um, uh, are you still there? Yep, yeah, still here. Okay, some uh, software update just interrupted. Yeah, you no, know, let me just ignore that. I, I installed it right before we started this, and I was afraid it was gonna not work so just hold off on the install <laughs> um cool uh yeah so i just try to pack it all in to get the most get the most out of whatever experience it is so that's kind of where i'm where my head is at with that tip and then another tip i would say is um travel light um you know when i first started traveling i would think of all the occasions that would, I mean, that's still necessary because if you have stuff that you need to show up for and, and you want to dress a particular way, then, then cool. But instead of packing four different pairs of shoes, I learned how to figure out how can I just pair one or two pairs of shoes with what I have going on. And the, le the less amount of pants and shirts I can, I can figure out how to navigate with, that's what I'll do because I want to just focus less on what I'm wearing, for example, and and more on getting out and just doing and getting getting out in these streets. Less so. And also, it bad. avoids a check bag fee, so that you too. don't have to worry about all of that. You know what I mean? I, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a huge advocate of packing light whenever possible. I'm trying to figure out how to pack light for this week long trip coming up. But, oh, yeah, you um, to Aruba, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's shorts and tees. That's all I really need, personally. Speaking. Yeah. But who knows what other activities we have ahead of us, right? Well, uh, did, I, did I read you right? You 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 texted me about the bag. So are you taking your bikes to so, Aruba? So no, not this trip. So we bought the bags just to be able to start thinking of future trips. Can we take our bags, bikes with us so that we can ride wherever we go? Yeah. Um, cause ideally most places that you go, it's safe to ride a bike, park it right outside the restaurant and you'll be okay. Yeah. Um, and other places not so safe. So, um, the goal is, um, maybe not these bikes, but our future bikes, um, we're able to pack them up so that we can ship them with us. So the only check bag we'd have would be our bicycles. So, okay. you know, trying to take a little bit out of your page. A, a page out of your book, you know, be prepared for the adventures ahead. You know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, um, you know, tell us where people can find you, see the amazing pics of you and your, your son enjoying life and, um, you know, anything that you have coming up um, uh, that you want people to know about. Um, well, I'm on Instagram at madmanralph. My page is private so that I can control the inflow of bots and things. And okay. Okay. people that I that I that you know um tend to try to follow just to attack your inbox. <laughs> um but yeah, that's where you could find the content that I seldomly post. Okay, um, okay. And, and and you know, um I, I would be remiss to not ask you what are some of your goals as a diverse director of diversity um, at your company? Like if, if that's something that you can talk about um, that you think might help in, in maybe three, four or five years down the line um, or, or just what, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Like, how do you feel as though that the new push for diversity is going to be something that, it's going to change the landscape of how they see people of color. Well, um, so diversity, so it's it's director of inclusion. Mm -hmm. And I decided on that title specifically because if what's done to create a sense of inclusion, a sense of belonging for all the people at your company, especially people of color. Um, then diversity is not going to be as much of an obstacle. Um, equity, hopefully, then should not be as much of an obstacle because I feel like those are byproducts of what happens when you do the right thing when it comes to inclusion. So that's why I chose 
chose that as as the title and not the full diversity diversity equity inclusion director. Gotcha. Um, and I mean that essentially gets to the heart of the heart of it for me is my goal as someone new in that role because I for ten years worked as an account manager working and interfacing with clients and with all of the different departments within the agency to bring campaigns to life. That was my that was my career. And then I was approached with this opportunity. So now for me, it's really about learning more so what inclusion means now, what it means from my point of view, um, so that it's coming from the heart, all the work that I that I continue to do. And also just making space for other points of views because I'm not I'm not I'm only one person within a 150 person agency that you know may increase numbers or may decrease but you know it's I'm just, I'm just one person so I want to lead with with integrity um, continue to have a love for what I what I'm doing um, and just make sure I'm doing right by people and what can get in the way are you know, maybe initiatives that aren't necessarily hitting at the thing that I know is going to make the most impact, but making sure that there's balance of, of doing the things that the company wants to do, but also making sure that the things that it needs to do to make real change is happening. So that's, that's where I'm at with it. And that's what, that's what 2021 is, is, is going to continue to be about. Well, thank you very much. I, I do really want to say I, I appreciate you doing this. I know we tried this once in Myrtle Beach, but I know, man. We had the view, we had the tree with the, yeah, with the I know, house. I know. I, I try to replicate it all back here for you. Um, you know, no justice, none of that ancient tree vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but okay. once again, um, I really appreciate you sharing um all of your experiences from um, you know, employment to mental health to just discovering different things. Um, I appreciate you being vulnerable enough to really have these discussions, these tough dis discussions um, around life, travel, um, and 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 COVID, right? Because um, it's now part of everything that we do. Yeah. So once again, I really appreciate you for for really doing this and keep up the great work. Thank you, man. It it's it, it's. I, I appreciate you. You make it easy to um to 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 answer questions honestly and to have candid conversations. So thank you. I appreciate it.